Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets, how to increase your market business success while providing people with fresh food. Farmer's markets are essential. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer or food maker selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. This week on Tent Talk, we're chatting about must-have tools and helpful tips for new farmer's market managers. Hey everyone, I'm one of your hosts, Bridget Myers. I'm a longtime farmer's market manager and education coordinator at Farmer's Market Pros. And I'm Kat Fields-White, director of San Diego Markets, where I'm still an active farmer's market manager, a market consultant, and founder of Farmer's Market Pros, and host of Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference, and the Farmer's Market Pros community. And I'm Justine marzoni Mead, Tent Talk producer, marketing director for Farmer's Market Pros, and logistics coordinator for Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference, coming to you live in San Diego, California, March 6th, 7th, and 8th, 2023. Don't miss it. Don't miss it, guys. It's (laughs) coming up soon. soon. Don't make us do all this hard work for nothing. <laughs> it's gonna, go time now. It's go time. We're in a surge. We're in a surge. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. We're very excited to see everybody. So Always. Yeah, either yeah. digitally or in person. That's right. <laughs> Today's episode of Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast, is supported by Manage My Market, offering proven solutions that eliminate paperwork and streamline management tasks for large and small market organizations. Use Manage My Market for online vendor registration, assigning space locations, and creating easy-to-navigate maps for your participants and your shoppers. Join markets in more than 30 states and get organized by clicking the Manage My Market logo on the resource page at FarmersMarketPros.com. Welcome back to Tent Talk. This week, we are talking about what brand new farmers market managers need for a smooth transition into their new roles. And I'm going to suggest if you're not a brand new manager... You might want to don't tune out (laughs) because everybody can use a refresher now and again. Even us looking at this script, like just looking at the tips that we're going to talk about, it's like, oh, yes. And we've been managing markets for many, many years. So long. And it's always good to have a refresher. And I just know that there's a lot of new market managers that listen to our podcast as a good resource when they're getting started. So it's for everyone. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. And disclaimer, we can't teach you how to manage a market (laughs) in – what, a 30 minute episode? A 30 minute episode. So these are just some like real quick, we're just gonna like fire off a bunch of little suggestions, little tips and tricks that we've developed over the years, um, things that we've relearned. And um, hopefully this just can kind of be like a quick little, I don't know, just like expand your brain real quick. Yep. A quick, a very short version of a booth camp. Yes. yes. A booth camp. You're just waiting to use that I for an actual class. Really had like has that. like puns that she just like has on a post-it. She's like, how can I use this? She trademarked all of them too, so yeah, don't, even, right. don't even bother. Yeah, they've all, I, I own the domains for all of them. <laughs> yeah. She's in charge. Oh, man. So I think getting started, it's good to kind of look at – the basics, like organizational tools um, for your market. If you're getting uh, getting a new market started or even if you're coming into an established market, I think taking a look at market rules and policies and either refreshing that or developing market rules and policies is just kind of a vital part of making sure that everyone at the market's on the same page because everything will run way more smooth when you and your farm- farmers and vendors are speaking the same language. Yeah, yeah. those are important. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can, you know, if you're coming into an existing market or if you're operating a market that you've been at for a while, you know, take a look at those each year and kind of do a little refresh, see if anything's changed legally that mm-hmm. you need to change up, um, see if your insurance carrier is now requiring you to get additional insured certs and see if the, your permits have changed that your folks need to know about. So that's kind of where the whole thing starts is those market rules and policies. If you're at a brand new market or you're a brand new manager and there don't seem to be any market rules and policies <laughs> around, there's a few resources for that. Uh, I would tune into some of our episodes about market rules. There's mm-hmm. some good ones out there. Uh, there's the conference coming up. Uh, and then Farmers Market Coalition has a lot of stuff online that you can download that'll give you kind of sample market rules. Ask your fellow market managers. Yeah, and in terms of like policies and rules, also I always think back to our episode of Tent Talk that we had. Um, Shiny Flannery is a guest, and she really encouraged us to kind of ask why we have certain policies and why we have certain rules. And so if you're a new market manager that's coming into an organization, you might just ask the person that's training you and say, why do we have this rule? What purpose does it serve? Is there any, um, are there any groups of people that this particular policy might 
be holding back or disincentivizing but in participating in our markets or like what is the onus of yeah, having but- this policy mm-hmm. and kind of just asking those questions and if you are still the market manager you can ask yourself that you know why do we have this rule yeah and you can always get rid of a rule or change a rule or change the language around a rule you know at you know you're in charge you're the boss yeah. so think about what the purpose is of that too many rules the, your vendors and farmers are going to tune out. So yeah. it needs to be really purposeful. There needs to be a meaning behind each rule and policy. So Yeah, and also understanding that justification because sometimes, very often, when you have to enforce a rule, <laughs> it's helpful to be able to have really clear language around why that exists. So beyond your own knowledge base, having kind of like a quick little um, kind but firm response if somebody asks you, why do we even have to do this anyway, that you could just, you know, briefly explain it, um, and that will help you enforce those. Yeah, give yourself some backup. Absolutely. People definitely respond better to those kinds of things if they know that, hey, this is what we're doing to so that we comply with a legal requirement, or this yeah. is what we're doing because you arriving on time uh, means that shoppers are ready to shop earlier. I and- think that is, like, I mean, really one of the most important rules, I think, like on-site rules is, are you expecting your vendors to arrive on time and be open and ready to sell at a certain time? Hopefully, yes. If you're a new market manager, please make that a priority. Let's all get consistent with that and keep our farmers and vendors accountable with that. But you need to be able to explain it's because shoppers get frustrated when they're not. Then they're going to go shop somewhere else. And then this market doesn't exist. So let's all play <laughs> on the same team here. But I think is if they don't think you're just trying to be like – a teacher taking attendance with it and yeah. versus like, hey, I'm trying to help your business. Um, kind of having that backup explanation is going to be really helpful when you are talking to new vendors or enforcing the rule. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of – or kind of in the same vein as having a rule, and I think we might talk a, a little bit more about this when we kind of get to the more communication-type tools. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is really related is having um, – like a vendor handbook or some side of some sort of codified version of these rules that they're not just um, up there in your brain, but they're written down somewhere and um, you can easily refer people to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a link or a, somewhere online or a PDF that you're sending out to people is good. And it's also handy to have an analog version of that. So if you've got a simple flyer, and sometimes that's kind of a truncated set of the rules, so it may not be going through the necessarily the permit requirements or insurance because that only the business owner needs to know that. But it, it, it will have things about attendance and setup and tent weights and all that good stuff that not only the owner of the business, but whoever is working in that booth that day needs to know. So it's easy to hand those rules to them. That's a yeah. really great thing to remember is that even if you're sending everything to the owner at a farmer's market, sometimes they're sending employees. They have staff coming there. So if you're not talking to the staff and kind of relaying these this information about policies and rules – Really, it's hard for that staff to, A, kind of know what to do if the owner hasn't made that clear to them. And just think about your relationship with that person that you're actually seeing at the market week after week. Just make sure you're on the same page with that and give them a copy of everything. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we easy. could talk about rules for a long time. This is, yeah, just, just a <laughs> I'm looking at like, the time taking my like, – we, we like rules. Yeah. yeah. Rules are good. <laughs> well, it's really important. That's a nice yeah. – you know, it's a – Put it at the top of the show. Rules. Rules. (laughs) It's a rules rule. Rules with purpose, really. You know, that'll set you up for success. Yep. Yeah. Um, Next on our list is some sort of market management software. Mm -hmm. Um, That could be, you know, something um, like a a subscription type of service that you have or, you know, we've worked with MarketWorks. We've worked with Manage My Market. There's many different um, softwares out there that you can explore. Um, Or you can do something a little bit more simple like Excel. But as long as you have um, a really clear way of keeping track of all your stuff, it could either be, you know, something that's all inclusive that includes your vendor applications and your market spread and all that type. Or it could just be, you know, Google Sheets. But Mm -hmm. having a clearly identified, like, this is the way that our organization is going to do it and make sure that your staff or your board or whoever is has their hands in the farmer's market pot understands that, you know, this is this is how it works. And I will say for new market managers especially, my advice is to go take a look at these programs, these softwares, really try to understand how they function. Take a look at you know, market managers that use spreadsheets as a way to organize and make a decision kind of from the start because our organization uses spreadsheets and some other kind of internal documents. We're embarrassed about that. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) We we honestly believe there's some great management software out there. Yeah, I've looked. I mean, uh, because 
management market and market works have been sponsors at our conference. And so I've talked to them extensively about their programs. I've seen demos and they look amazing. But now that we're so ingrained in the yeah. system that we have, don't me, fix what, what's not broke. I mean, there is like some stuff that's broken. I'm not <laughs> broken, but like, I think it's, I think this is not an ad for them, but like, because I have not used the software, but I think that like the way that they can like remind a vendor that their permit's about to expire and they can submit all their paperwork through this software and like it lays the map out for you and things like that. I just think that that would be beneficial. But the idea of transitioning mm-hmm. is just yeah. so daunting to me. And we have year round markets, so we don't get a time where there's like paperwork catch up time or if that's a thing for people that have seasonal markets. I don't know. But it just the transition is overwhelming. And I know a lot of markets that have done it. But if you're just starting out, Try to make try to look at that ahead of time. Yeah, Don't just start with spreadsheets because it's easier. But if you can make something early and, and do it off the bat, that's my yeah. advice, my pro tip. And actually, the the next couple of things on our list totally fit into that because mm-hmm. you need to have a filing system. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. a lot of those software programs essentially provide a digital filing system mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have an organization that you report to that's maybe a governmental organization that also wants to see paper. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we're all trying to get to more of a paperless office thing, but some of those, if you're working for a city that runs a farmer's market, a lot of times they want those analog signed applications from your vendors in a file cabinet somewhere. So Mm -hmm. you need to know what the requirements are from the the sponsoring organization that you're working with. Um, You need to know then if you can fit it into your software program. So figuring out whether that filing system can just be an extension of whatever kind of management software or Google Drive or or what have you that you're using, or if you need some analog backup, just figure it out, get that organized. You are going to want to keep track of vendor applications. You're going to need that for risk management issues and for submitting things to higher authorities and all that. Um, Invoicing, same thing. You can go out on your own, get a square account, do your invoicing online. Some folks I know are still invoicing kind of in person, handing people receipts and picking up cash. That works too, especially at a smaller market. Or it may be that you've got invoicing capability in whatever kind of market management software you've decided to use. Yes. And um, we talk about this a lot, but want to emphasize when you're developing your filing system or your invoicing system, whatever systems you're setting up and all of these organizational tools, um, make sure that along with that, you are documenting what you're doing and documenting these decisions that you're making and kind of annotating, you know, your thoughts and life. Keep that diary because we want to make you want to make sure, you know, even if you're a brand new market manager and you're feeling very bright eyed and bushy tailed, um, you may not do this job forever. You may not you know, be operating this market forever and you want whoever inherits your market to have really informed um, information on why you made these decisions, why you developed these policies um, and how to operate that market. So make sure that you're keeping those live documents um, and keeping track of stuff to set up your um the next person for success. Well, and maybe mm-hmm. you are going to do it forever, but you want some help. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the more you document what you're doing, the easier it is to train an assistant yeah. market manager or somebody that's going to give you a little aid there and let you have a day off once in a while. Yeah. True. Yeah. So some other things um, that maybe you should think of as you're getting started on your market management journey is how you're going to communicate with your vendors, um, staff, kind of internal communication, like getting your vendor email lists really organized. Again, if you're using a software that kind of does that job for you, you can use a spreadsheet. You can have a group on your email that's um, all grouped together. So how are you going to communicate with your vendors and your farmers? Um, And we had a really good episode about that recently. I'm forgetting the number off the top of my head. But um, if you're a new market manager that's kind of trying to determine how you want to communicate with your vendors, there's so many different ways that you can do that. And so if you're curious about using something like a Slack channel or a Facebook group or Instagram messaging, um, check out that that episode that we have because we kind of weigh the pros and cons of these different mediums. And um, we talk so, to some market managers that have implemented those different communication channels. Yeah, text mm-hmm. messages, all yeah. those things. You can probably put that uh, episode number in the show yes. notes, right? Yes, and absolutely it's just like such a – 
vital thing to do right off the bat. Don't just start a market and say, oh, here's your setup instructions and no, and not communicate with your vendors and farmers. They need to know that they're going to hear from you, how to reach you, what tool you're going to use for that. Make sure everyone's on the same page about it. Establish a schedule for regular advisories mm-hmm. for things that are coming up. Yeah. And then also you want to think about external communication, like how you're going to communicate with the public. Mm-hmm. Obviously, your job is both taking care of your vendors and that inside organizational thing, but then also communicating to your shoppers and customers and community. Um, So if you're inheriting a market, chances are there's already a website that might require, you know, updating, make sure that you, your vendor list on your website is current, um, any sort of information about your hours or your operation, your season. um, And then also you have your social media handles and, Stuff like Google My Business and Yelp and kind of those um, public review sites. So if you need any help with that, we actually developed a course uh, last year called uh, Marketing for Markets that goes through all of those things, too. So especially if you're a brand-new market manager, you may have experience in operations or food service or kind of some other industries. But um, there is a huge marketing aspect to this new role that you're in. So if you're needing some help in those areas, definitely check out that class. And um, Bridget's soft voice goes through exactly how to manage those Yelp (laughs) reviews and how to set up your Google My Business account and all that stuff. Yeah, very handy. Yeah, Make sure people know where you are. For sure. Yeah, it has a lot of tips too. And uh, like all the social media tips and just communicating with like surrounding businesses to your market. I mean, all the things that you want to make sure that you're doing, especially as you're getting off the ground as either a brand new market or a brand new market manager in an established market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what about actual nuts and bolts hardware kind of tools? <laughs> These have all been sort of esoteric marketing, <laughs> higher level <laughs> intellectual tools. Yeah. Those are How more about... like admin too, behind the scenes stuff. So <laughs> Right. What about those tools you need on site like at the, the market at five the in the morning? Farmer's when... market gear. Yeah. Exactly. I'd say definitely a measuring wheel. Oh, my gosh. If you don't know what a measuring wheel is, baby market managers, get out there and get one. They will change your life. Mm-hmm. They're really incredible. And yeah. they're, like, fun. They're, yeah. They're fun. It looks like a unicycle. They're a great conversation starter because yeah. everybody will walk up, neighbors and, and local businesses walk yeah. and say, what are you doing and what yeah. is You kind of look thing? like a little, like, civic engineer. Yeah, you do. You can or do like anything you want. Well, I have my safety vest on and my measuring wheel. I can, like, walk into, like, un permitted areas. I can take whatever I want. I can do, I mean, like, people just let you do it. Because you look the, so official. Yeah, you can walk yeah. in all the traffic. People stop. Oh, well, we did put safety vests on here. Add safety oh, vests. Safety vests. Yeah, vest. very important. Yeah. It makes you look official. And not um, to say that, you know, you can't get a long way with tape measures. Yeah. We did that for yeah. a long we, time. I, we used a tape measure for a long time. And then we had that fabric I hate measuring. that one. <laughs> yes. I hate that one. I feel like... I would always have to use it. Like, you'd have your wheel, and then I'm like, oh, I guess I'll... I just felt like the kid sister that had, like... We're hazing you. The dumb thing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I felt bullied. Oh, and we broke so many tape measures. If you have, like, a 50-foot tape measure, and and one person's holding one in, and the other person's running up there, how many times do you forget to stop after 50 feet, and it rips out of the box? Or they snap you. (laughs) Yes. They're I'll dangerous. Tape measure Again, measuring wheel. Measuring wheel. We're a big measuring wheel Or chalk. We use permanent marker on the curb. That's Which, a really good t- trick. Yeah. Let's take a picture and post it. I feel like people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, just put a, put a little tick mark on the curb. I mean, it's like you don't have like a – I mean, I hate to say that we do that because I don't want people to be fussy about it. But we've done it enough. People can get over it. Oh. You said to be ca- – oh, <laughs> I will edit, say – We can edit this, this out. One of those. <laughs> don't, no, say this farmer, don't say farmer's market pros told you you could do that because there's definitely an element of one of those – City uh, property. Ad, you know, ask for forgiveness rather than yeah. permission things because – Graffiti. I'm, right? It's graffiti. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like very subtle such, graffiti. It's yeah. subtle graffiti. It's, purpose, it's public art. It's purposeful graffiti. I like it's that. guerrilla marketing. Yeah. Let's call it public art because <laughs> yeah. then, I mean, we're protected by free speech, right? That's it's right. public art. We're going to say all the things that those – pirate vendors come to our market and say to <laughs> us. Right. Free speech so we get to mark our space numbers on the curb. But it's such a lifesaver. When we finally started doing that I was like, I mean it just helps with your setup so much. So just be discreet about it. If it's something yeah. that you can do in the area I mean we're in like a really urban downtown area so it's not like some pristine neighborhood sidewalk that we're putting marks on and they're really subtle. So You may be on grass. You know, yeah. It depends yeah. on oh, what, yeah. what kind of market you have. So you, you may might not have a ground have to mark. little surveyor stakes yeah. to yeah. mark out your spaces or Or they have um like in like surveyor like kind of like a spray paint that they have those little sticks that they you can just like 
go like, and it just like makes one little tick mark. And it's like a little chalk and it rubs away. Yeah. Again, check with your parks department. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes that doesn't go over well. There are those little, a similar product that's actually washable chalk. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also, um, if you do get clearance for the chalk, um, a really handy tip is just walk around with a little spray bottle and you can just spritz Mm -hmm. it after the market. Exactly. Yes. Um, So there's ways to get around Mm -hmm. these rules. I know we love rules, but we also love to break them. (laughs) Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. You can use painter's tape. We've used that before on the right. curb. When we've had to move the market to like a neighborhood street, we use painter's tape. We don't mark the curb up. So that's helpful too. I mean, if your market is six blocks long, it's get that little squat butt workout. But <laughs> we did <laughs> have a farmer's market years ago that was in a parking lot. And we oh, actually yeah. drilled little screws into the parking lot, into the yeah. asphalt. And Is they, that why I got a flat tire <laughs> when I drove in that parking lot? <laughs> no, no, no. Lot? It was, Pointy it part down. Pointy part down. <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> No, it was always fine. flat. Oh, it was all the way down. It was yeah, all it was the all way, way down. down. Okay. Sticking up, just <laughs> tripping everybody. No, all the way flat into the ground. You couldn't see it unless, unless you were you looking to for look. it. Yeah. And then they knew where to put their things. Yeah, CVS yeah. parking lot's probably still there. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Been out of that site for years. We moved yeah. down the street to a better location, but That's I bet right. those screws are still there. So there's ways to mark your area. I've just I think new market managers think that they just have to either use chalk every single day or Try to piece it together by eye, like eyeball it every single week. You absolutely don't have to do that. There's a lot of ways to mark the spaces, and you should be marking the spaces because the vendors will, like, self-set up. Like, once they understand where to go, you don't want to have to kind of baby and, like, micromanage every single setup for the whole morning. It'll free your morning up to do some better things with your time. Yeah, and obviously this applies to um, spaces that are not – like stalls mm-hmm. or under yeah. a pergola or something yeah. like that. Um, if your market really literally is in the middle of the street or mm-hmm. in the middle of a park, um, yeah, popping then up and you're leaving. going to want to find a way to yeah. do this. But if you have a structure where it's clearly defined, yeah. we are jealous of you. I was just going to say, then we're just really jealous. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> Don't talk to us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we're jealous. Um, I like this note on here, comfortable shoes and clothes. I think sometimes we forget because we want to look so cute. And I remember I used to wear, like, my cute sandals when I first started managing markets, and it was a big mistake. Oh, the youth. Oh, the youths. (laughs) Yeah, my mistakes of my youth. Um, Yeah, so just, you know, wear those ugly, comfortable shoes. Yeah. Yeah, your back will thank you 10 years later. And you're in – Try to remember that markets are actually a form of food service. Mm -hmm. So probably the open-toed thing is not actually that good an idea. And just like I know as I'm talking to myself now, I know (laughs) when you wake up in the morning and it's so early and you're thinking, I don't care how I look. But then, you know, you are in a customer service position. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure even if you are dressed very comfortably that there's ways to be fashion forward. There's ways to make sure that your grooming is you know, up to standards. And Mm -hmm. also as a market manager, you are in a level of authority. So you want to keep that in mind when you're choosing your market day uniform. Well, we actually do use uniforms and we strongly encourage the people to use uniforms. So have a t-shirt with your logo on it. So you and anybody that's on your team, whether it's paid or volunteer team, have something that identifies them as the logical person to ask for information. Yeah. And if you don't have a budget for that right away, just pick a color shirt that you and yeah. your – whoever's working with you, even if it's just one more person, can wear and just print a little name tag on your home printer yeah. or write it on a little sticky on your shirt so people know who you are. I'm um, Just something that identifies you and makes you look professional and like you're taking this job seriously. Yeah. Big call out for lanyards. Yeah. They're just one step down from um, safety vests in terms of making you look official and Very making true. people know Do whatever to, you want to look for that. you. <laughs> That's right. Very Anybody true. with a lanyard, people <laughs> step aside. Also, if you do have a uniform, it makes those early morning like what do I wear moments very easy because you're like I'm wearing the orange shirt (laughs) it's what I wear every Saturday you know and you just you can just go to it so and you want people to know who to ask to get the correct information because if you're not wearing a uniform and you're not clearly the market manager shoppers are going to ask farmers and vendors for information about your market and who knows what they're going to (laughs) say maybe right maybe not so they're going to get close to right they might not have you know the right Kind of tone if it's a neighbor or something. And not just shoppers, but, you know, new yeah. farmers and vendors that show up are going to turn to somebody that's already half set up and say, where am I supposed to be? And yeah. and if they're in a hurry, they may just say right there, even though that's not exactly where you want them. <laughs> yeah. You need to lo- you need to be kind of recognizable as the person in charge, the that's person right. with the answers. Carry that measuring wheel around. Get some kind of uniform. Get a safety vest. People yeah. will know. Stuff like headlamps, flashlights, those mm-hmm. are really good, especially in those early, early mornings. Or if you have an evening market, mm-hmm. um, just having that stuff ha- handy um, 
and also for safety reasons, you want to make sure that you can see things. We may I had a meme a couple weeks ago on um, our Farmer's Market Pros account about just like when you're there early in the morning, you're trying to recognize a farmer and they're like talking to you and you're like, I don't know who this person is. Boy, so sorry. make sure you get yourself some sort of light. Mm-hmm. Light helps. I got to say it. We've got a big market and I'm old and sometimes even with the light. I don't, I got to say, which business are you you're with? Like, hey, huh? buddy. I do know you. You look familiar and, and I like you. Good person. What business are you with? So yeah. I put you in the right spot. Cat's like, hey, you. What's up? Hey, guys. Like when you see your farmers and vendors like around town and you're not at the market, I'm like, hey, like we know each other. Like who are we? Hey, friend. <laughs> hey, friend. Um, yeah, very helpful to have. First aid kit I feel like is really helpful. I'd say like just pack a like a box with some supplies that you'll need. It's kind of like – little camping box. Like, what yeah. are you going to need? You're going to be outdoors. You need to dress in layers. You need to have, first like, a basic first aid kit for yourself and your team and your vendors and also shoppers and, um, you know, provide those kind of basics for them. And just think of it as, like, you're going on an adventure for the day. What do you need? Paper yeah. towels. Yep. Carabiners. Towels. Pens. A couple of short bungees. Yeah. Maybe yep. a pair Sunscreen. of scissors. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, one of those little um, – like Swiss Army knife type things that has maybe like a screwdriver, a set of pliers. Recently, one of our info booth tables fell apart and I put it back together with the screwdriver that one of the vendors had. And I was like... Justine MacGyver. I know they were calling me MacGyver. I felt very handy. How long ago was this? Because I, I just have a feeling that once you do that, you're you're stuck with that table forever. Whereas perhaps we have a budget for a new folding no, table. No, that table <laughs> is dead now. I put okay, a good. big X on it in tape. Great. So Denny stops bringing it up from Excellent. the storage. Um, we got yes. a new one. I hate to ask this. Is it still in the storage as oh, opposed yeah. to in a garbage container? Oh, it's there. Of course. It's We're using it for heat. parts. <laughs> That's what Jerome said. He used to have like table. 15 tents here at the office, and he's like, We're using it for parts. He did. I'm like, do This that. is a tent junkyard right <laughs> it now. Was. It was a tent <laughs> Just junkyard. Just buy a new tent. I feel like yeah. everybody in this business would want to tour the tent junkyard. Do I you mean, think? it's like art installation. <laughs> Um, you're going to need a phone charger, most likely, like a power bank, which is very handy to have. I remember when those didn't really exist, and we'd be at the market, and then it's like, well, your phone's dead. Oh, well. <laughs> Just shout touch. my name real loud yeah. <laughs> if you need it. So, yeah, it's something to keep you keep you juiced up. You want to be posting on social media while you're out there market. So if it's not you, maybe someone else, but, um, you know, keep that juice going There are all day. markets that use walkie-talkies still, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We did that during COVID because we had to count people in, count people out. Yeah. I mean, during high covid uh, I feel like we use it at our special events sometime. Yeah. I mean, maybe not anymore. We used to. But, yeah, walkie-talkies is a great option if people will pay attention to them and know how to use them, yeah. everyone yeah. on the team. Also, you know, depending on what your storage situation like, that's another kind of, like, thorn in the side of market managers where mm-hmm. we work in a very mobile environment and we don't all have storage. Um, but if you have storage in the budget, it might be really helpful to have, like, one extra tent on hand or one extra table on hand or some sort of push cart or wagon that you can use to load in and load out. We mm-hmm. utilize a wagon every week to set up our info booth, and it's really helpful. So just simple stuff like that. And um, it is one of those things, if you've never done it before, you'll learn real quick what you need on site. So, you mm-hmm. know, make sure that you're keeping track of those things and you know, you might put them on your birthday wish list or your Christmas <laughs> list or, you know, make sure that you're allocating budgets towards those for the next season. Um, but write those things down when you're in a pinch at the market and remind yourself, oh, okay, next time I need someone to buy me a present, I'm asking for boot warmers or mm-hmm. I'm asking for a new baseball cap or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and keep a list of supplies that you're using at the market because if you're working with like a city agency or some kind of nonprofit group, you want them to understand the real cost of running a market. Don't just buy yourself tents and tables and not tell anyone. They need to understand that that's part of market equipment and yeah. that's part of your – it should be part of your annual budget for when those things die a sad death. Um, so, yeah, just keep track of all the things that you're getting and you'll learn real quick that you need a big sturdy tent and not one of those – $40 tent so you get a Target, but maybe we should let you just experience that and learn that lesson no, for yourself. That's <laughs> why they're listening. We're going to let them know. But Don't go through that But if you learn that lesson, yeah. it buries so deeply in your heart. When you mind. get cut by True. that tent arm that has snapped off and it just like slaps you in the shoulder, you'll never buy a cheap tent or again. Or like it punctures sure. through the canvas and yeah. then the canvas just rips and is like... Dangling. It's one of those hard Save lessons. Save yourself, people. Learn from our mistakes. Yeah. No, you do not have to learn this for yourself. You can tune into Tent Talk and find out. <laughs> That's that why we're here, right? They have to suffer tent. a little bit so they yeah. learn. There we go. And you can always visit – sorry, this is like a very pluggy episode, but we, we just – 
We've got some answers. Yeah. If you need some help, if you visit our resource page on our website, mm-hmm. we partner with so many incredible providers of services and products that like we have used Mm -hmm. that we rely on Um, and so if you're ever in a pinch or if you you know if you want something a little bit more curated than Google you can click on our resources page and kind of peruse some of our awesome sponsors and affiliates for just some like really cool products and they'll save you time and some energy and a little bit of heartbreak really expanding Mm -hmm. that this year yeah yeah that's Mm -hmm. one of our plans for this year is um, more more tools and resources on that page. Yeah. And then something that new farmers market managers should do for sure and do all year long and actually all of us, even us seasoned farmers market managers. Um, That's a nice word for old. Yeah. We're seasoned. (laughs) We're grumpy. Yeah. Right. Cranky. Cratchity. (laughs) Salty. We're salty. Um, Go to other farmers markets and connect with other market managers in your area. I know it's so great. This podcast has been really wonderful and the – conference as well, just to hear from other market managers that say that they've been really connecting with uh, market managers that are in their area. I think COVID kind of catapulted us into talking to one another in areas where maybe we didn't do so much of that before. I know some areas have been just very cooperative from the get-go and, like, again, jealous. But I think during COVID, it was like we had to talk to each other because no one knew what was going on. We had to share resources and information. And just building those relationships has been really key, I think, to just having a better market management experience. We can learn from each other. We can keep up on new rules and regulations. We can collaborate, share resources, and things like that. So getting to know your other market managers. Um, Some market managers are crabby and they don't want to talk to you. But, you know, there's plenty, I'm sure, in whatever area you might be in that you can talk to. And, of course, in our – this is super pluggy – in our Farmer's Market (laughs) (laughs) pros community. I mean, that's a no-cost thing. But on Facebook, just talking to other Farmer's Market managers and um, people that are in your your field. Yeah, and especially going to other markets in your your particular area, Mm -hmm. um, whether – that's down the street or a couple miles away or in a different part of your state. Like, I feel like when you go to markets in your own region, there's a lot of similarities of like, okay, we have similar weather. And so just seeing like what another market manager wears or, you know, we might have similar vendors. So just seeing the way that they do stuff, it, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, dang, that was smart. I would have never thought of that. Mm -hmm. And um, Similar permits and regulations because yeah. those can mm-hmm. vary widely from different parts of the country or even different parts of the county or the state that you're in. Yeah. yeah. So using that as a resource I think is really smart. Um, getting involved with your local farmer's market association, if you have a state association or something that's um, even more local than that, those can be just huge, huge resources for you. Um, lots of tools there. Again, like they might have get-togethers or meetups, and yeah. um, they're advocating on behalf of farmers markets in your state or local area. So getting involved and signing up for that, um, I think, can be super helpful. Yeah, and they might even um, do stuff like remind you of when certain grants are available or mm-hmm. when certain funding for, you know, so tapping in with that, even if you don't have the bandwidth to be, like, an active member or sit on the board of something, but just, you know, sign up for newsletters. It's amazing how much you can learn just to be like, okay, I'm going to subscribe to this newsletter, and then you just get little updates, and you don't, you know, just being in that loop will kind of help you get your sea legs, especially if you're brand new to this industry. There is certain jargon and stuff like that that just, you know, just simply reading a weekly or monthly newsletter will kind of help you get in that zone. Well, mm-hmm. and you being a member adds to the pool of voters that that association is representing. So they they become more effective in getting policies changed that True. benefit farmers markets. Yep. You end up advocating for yourself just being a part of those groups. Right. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um, regional conferences. There's a lot of states and in, in areas that have their own annual conferences, whether it's like a quick online half day or a couple days. Um, we've attended some great conferences in other areas around the country um, and in Canada. And, of course, plugging away. <laughs> we keep our plug plugging. We keep <laughs> keeping our plugging theme alive. Um, our intense conference um, and coming up in a couple months is just a really great resource. I love talking to new farmers market managers that have come to the conference and just seeing in their eyes kind of get really wide and a little bit of terror, but mostly excitement yeah. about like what are the possibilities of being a market manager and how exciting it can be and just things that they don't really think of that they can do or that they can be a part of. So connecting with people at conferences, I feel like that rejuvenates me and that can keep me going when I'm like 
just exhausted or like feeling burnt out, especially when we start a new market. I mean, we're not new market managers, but when we start a new market, it does, it's a different feeling. And it's like, you can get a little disheartened and disengaged a little bit. So doing conferences and groups and stuff like that can help. I feel like the brand new market managers at that conference Mm -hmm. look markedly less terrified by the third day. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. They're starting to feel their power. They're starting to feel like they have the skills, like they have some answers. Yeah. And something, uh, when we spoke with Stuart a couple months ago on the podcast, um, he said this thing that was like, I don't know, it just made me feel so warm and fuzzy of like coming, he was specifically talking about our intense conference, but I feel like it really applies to other types of regional or statewide conferences is that Going to a conference about farmers markets legitimizes a career that is very unseen mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. it just gives you this like little badge of like I'm part of a community and I feel like that that gasses you up in a in a different way than other types of like professional development. That's yeah. true. Because you're just of- like, oh, there's other people like me. This is a really weird you know, it's just a funky little thing that not a lot of people know exists, but there's a lot of incredibly hardworking and creative people behind the scenes doing this. And when you see them, you're like, oh, this is a thing. Kind of mm-hmm. validates your choice yeah. to, to be in this in this fun, wacky, tiring <laughs> industry. <laughs> yes. It's a little yes. isolating sometimes because you're just kind of running your own thing and – you know, shoppers come and they're like, oh, what do you do? Like, run the market? Like, what does that mean? Like, what, what booth do you work at? Yeah. Like, what do you I'm do like, the rest of the week? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Why do you need a booth here? Why do you need a manager? Like, what do you do the rest of the week? And it's just like, that can make you like, a little die inside your body. So it's nice to get to be in a, in a room full of people who do this for a living and yeah. enjoy it and have a lot of things to share and um, just being around your people. And so often you get a reminder there that what we do... Seems kind of silly sometimes, all mm-hmm. this tent popping and and towing cars, towing and cars telling people and to get their dogs streets. out of there. It just seems so trivial, but really. We're doing like really important work. We're bringing mm-hmm. nutritionally dense food to neighborhoods. We're keeping farmers farming so we're not all um, destined to eat little green pills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, uh, I mean, this is, we're doing good stuff. Yeah. And it, it's awesome to be in a community of other market managers that remind you of that. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is the most important thing, right? Everyone has to eat. So you're doing great work. You're community building. You're feeding people. As market managers, you might not be growing the food, but you're doing the work to deliver that to people who need it and should have it. So Yeah. And the best part about having a little community is when you're not feeling that way, when you're, like, not feeling stoked or, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like every market manager is like, oh, this is so awesome. And then you, it's kind of like when you're in a couple and you have, like, your first fight and you're like oh my god like are we gonna last yeah so it's like every but every new market manager is gonna have that first market manager freak out moment where Mm -hmm. it's either they hit this like burnout wall or they have a weird interaction with a vendor or they have a weird interaction with a shopper or Mm -hmm. a weird interaction with a board member and it's like you have your community to draw on and any market manager that's been around for a season has probably had a million moments like that too. So reach mm-hmm. out and, you know, that's why having connections with your local Farmers Market Association or reach out to us here at Farmers Market Pros or Farmers Market Coalition is another great resource. So just find your people. Mm-hmm. Best tool there is. <laughs> Our community, our hive. And we're yes. your people and welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that helps kick you off to a good start. If you're a new market manager, if you're heading into a new market season and you're a seasoned market manager, (laughs) I like that word. I'm going to use that word from now on, seasoned. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So hopefully that was helpful. Stick with us. We'll keep providing tips and tools and uh, you're going to do this. You're doing good stuff. You can do it. Yeah. Thanks for listening today. And big thanks to Manage My Market for helping markets of every size manage their documents and data and improve their marketing and for supporting Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast. For more information, click the Manage My Market logo on the resource page at farmersmarketpros.com or chat with them live and in person at Intense, the Farmer's Market conference. Register today. Farmer's Markets are all about connection, and all of us, operators, farmers, and vendors, keep learning. Connect with people just like you from various parts of the country and share what's happening in your area in the terrific conversations over in our private Facebook group, the Farmer's Market Pros Community. If you're actively involved in a farmer's market, please find us there, answer the three qualifying questions, and join the group. You can also message us on Instagram at Farmer's Market Pros 
or email us at connect at farmersmarketpros.com. If you're looking for further education, check out our online course offerings at farmersmarketpros.com. Thanks for listening to Tent Talk. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you access your podcasts and tell us and others how you're enjoying Tent Talk. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss the next episode. Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast, is proudly produced by Farmer's Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzoni Mead. Original music by David Mead. Thank you so much for listening today, and we'll have another great episode next week, so tune in.